Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be trying something a little bit new with the green screen and with the light, so it could turn out horrible. If it does, I apologize. And it very well might. There's actually a probably pretty good chance that it does. I'm not trying anything new with the video though. The video is pretty standard. We're doing a draft, but this time it's going to be power forwards. Today I got the power. The power to draft power forwards. I feel like there was something else I wanted to say, but I don't remember. So we'll just proceed. It's about that time again. Time to randomize the team here. So I will look at you guys and I will stop in a pro- Now. I'm stopping right now. Detroit. That's my, my dad's team right there. I'm sure I've said that many times. I don't really think about it, but I probably repeat myself a lot. And it's because I'm always kind of assuming that you never know if this is someone's first video or not. You know, if they just stumbled upon this, then throwing out random facts that they wouldn't have heard before because it could be the first time they are seeing me. If it is your first time seeing me, then I hopefully the green screen does work out. But I have absolutely no idea what to expect. Because again, for some reason, there's always something down over here in this corner. It just won't go away. Let's go with pick number nine. That's my... I guess right now I don't, it's just a random you know it could be nine it could be 23 and it sure is considering this is a power forward draft I'm not super upset about that and I think I see one right there I sure do the Florida Panthers acquired Matthew Kachuk and that was a massive trade whoa Slavin's a 90 overall with this roster that is craziness all right Chucky let's get it done if I have drafted him it's been a very long time since this has been a possibility so I think I'm gonna take you see what I see at 90 overall five million dollars to be our goaltender who who's that should I know them? Gabriel Landis Cog. That salary is a little too much, but I'm going to take him regardless. And I think, yeah, that's two left wingers for us. But whatever. It is what it is, you know? Ooh, Manji Apane, dude. 87 overall at that contract is absurd. So far, this draft has not been particularly polite to our cap. But I'm going to be taking Tom Wilson regardless of his $5.1 million. I'm actually finding power forwards quite easily. I feel like it might be the custom roster, because I don't think he's normally a power forward, but I'm going to take Brock Nelson because he's a power forward with this roster. Bertuzzi's a power forward in this roster, so I am going to take our third left winger. I've not taken a single defenseman, by the way. Probably worth noting. Let's go Grizzlick, 85 overall, 3.6. That's not so bad. TVR is 85 overall. This is a weird roster. Does he deserve it? I feel like not really but I'll take it. In fact, you know what? I'm going to take him first and then I'll come back for Grizzlick because I feel like he'll be gone very soon with that cap hit and Grizzlick is gone. I'm going to take Jensen, another right-handed defenseman making 2.5. Gudis would be sick to pick up. He also shoots right. Wow. All right. Well, I'm kind of tempted to take him now. No, we'll stick with Jensen. And then if he's still there, I'll take him. We'll just have three right-handed defensemen that are very good. Nick Paul was listed as a power forward, so I took him. Decided to skip out on the defense for now, even though we only have two, and they're both right-handed. I'm going to take Gudis. I don't care if we have three right-handed defensemen. Dmitry Kulikov shoots left, and he's making 2.2 at 83 overall. That is a guaranteed pickup from your boy. I haven't really been paying attention to cap. We're actually doing okay. I thought it'd be worse than that. Evander Kane listed as a power forward in this roster. 5.1. Let's go ahead. Nick Holden shoots left and he is 83 overall at 1.3. Boone Jenner, 3.7 million. 81 overall is a centerman. I'm sorting by centers right now because we only have one, which is a little bit worrisome. I'll grab DeSmith to be our backup. He is a solid backup for sure. I'm surprised he hasn't gone yet, actually. 21 left, and we have five, oh no, five picks left. We could make it work, and we do need right wingers, so I'll take Anderson. I don't care that he's 79 overall. He's a power forward. He's making under a mil. Let's go, Boyle. With a 750k salary, I think it'd be irresponsible of me to not take Edler. So now we have $14 million, and we can basically take whatever power forwards we want. So the first two I come across, I'm likely just going to grab them. There we go. There's one. Patrick Hornquist. Welcome to the team, buddy. We actually cannot afford Jamie Benn at 9.5, because we have 9... Four, five, five left. Corey Perry's listed as a power forward, so I will grab him as our... Actually, he has 74 discipline. I'm going with Kyle Pozo. Besides, I don't really feel like making it to the Stanley Cup Finals and then losing, you know? I'm sorry, that was a cheap shot. But anyway, this is our team. Let's go put the lines together and see what we got. Based on that draft, you guys think we're going to be any good? I don't know. I don't know how to feel. Uh, hello, Connor? You're not Connor McDavid. Get out of my lineup. Oh, you hate to see that. That is not fun. Okay, I can make it all zeros. That's decent. Why would the best lines be like that, though? That makes zero sense to me. Anyway, this is what we got on offense. 
We look all right defensively. We got like a solid defensive core, I gotta say, but chemistry isn't there. Goaltenders, we got the man, the myth, and the legend all in one, actually. And we also have Soros. So yeah, there we go. Just kidding. You see what I see is the man, the myth. Yeah, I don't know if our team's gonna be any good. I feel like we're not gonna make the playoffs if I had... Yeah, I don't... Oh, it's so tough, man. You know what? Screw it. We're making the playoffs. You heard it here first. And I will say Chucky gets the most points with... 70. I don't think we're gonna get a whole lot of points here, to be honest. We're gonna rely on Soros quite a bit. Off to a relatively shaky start here, but that's all right. I have my PS5, like, just under the table here, and I'm always so worried I'm gonna kick it and turn it off by accident. Even though I think if you just turned it right back on, it would be okay. It's not like an Xbox 360 or something. I'm pretty sure it sort of saves the state unless you, like, turn it off, turn it off, you know? Anyways, while I'm talking about kicking PlayStations, Detroit is kicking some butt. Going into the two-week break there, we have 30 wins, which is actually very solid. We are having quite the year so far. Hopefully we can keep it up, though. Those two losses, three in a row. Make it four? Mm-hmm, five. Here we go. What a collapse. Now the question becomes, will there be any power forwards at the trade deadline that we are going to be interested in. Probably not, but maybe. Okay, I don't see anyone on the front page here, and it actually already drops off to 84 overall, so I think I'm out. So either we took all of the power forwards in the entire game, or everybody just wants them. Well, you know what? You can't have them. All right, I'm done here. Whoa, that's a big trade. Philadelphia is getting Patrick Kane, Benino, and a third in exchange for Jesper Wallstedt, a first and a third. Patches is headed back to Montreal with a sixth in exchange for a first. So we're at 34 wins right now. I believe we're third in the division. Very respectable. Let's see if we can have at least a half decent post-trade deadline here leading into the playoffs. And I don't, I, th I think we have a good chance here at making a run. Okay, the post-trade deadline wasn't the nicest to us, but it was nice enough. We we have the Washington Capitals. We have to, oh yeah, like I kind of want to lose now because I'm a Capitals guy and my dad's a Detroit guy, so I'm going to throw. We ended up finishing fourth in the division with 98 points. The Bruins one-upped us there near the end of the season. Tampa Bay with 121. I'm imagining that's going to be a President's Trophy performance. Yes, it is. They had Gensel, Bergeron, and Marner on their first line. Holy crap. They had Tanev, Dano, and Besser as their second line. Marcheseau, Wenberg, Bailey. Okay, that's a pretty respectable roster. They had Leonard and Holpe on defense. They had Lindell and Pulak, Klingberg, Riley, Middleton, and Bufflin. Not sure what's up with all that, but is there like a, another Bufflin coming into the game? Anyways, let's see if it was the top 16 teams that qualified for the playoffs. No, it wasn't. The, oh no. 12th place Philadelphia Flyers didn't make it. 14-15 did not make it. And then we have the 21st place San Jose Sharks sneaking in with 83 points. That is atrocious. I was pretty close with my points estimate. We had 73 from Chucky. I guess 70, if I remember correctly. Nelson got 71 and was a plus 15. Plus 14 from Landeskog. Boone Jenner put up 67. Oh, wow. That was second line too, I believe. Boone Jenner, what a legend. Saros went 36, 23, and 8 with four shutouts and a 9-14. We got an 8-5 and 2 record from DeSmith with a shutout and a 9-07. Leonard led the league with 50 Ws. He also had a 9-20. 21. Wow, there's a lot of good save percentages here. And at 229, but we got a 920 from Vili Huso, 921 from Cal, 927 from Kada, a 925 from Vasilevsky. Good year for goalies, apparently. McCarr and Hughes tied for points in terms of defensemen. They both got 75. Spurgeon's right there with 74. Carlson put up 72. Ekblad with 68. I feel like you don't really see him up here too often. Or maybe he's like down here and I just don't really pay attention, but I never really see him this high up, I feel like. Or maybe he's always there. And I just am completely oblivious. That is very possible. Pasta gets the Art Ross with 102 and not the Rocket Richard because I see Matthews down there with 60 and he had 35 helpers. So yeah, 95 points for Matthews. And we had five players break the 100 mark. It's playoff time. Here we go. Can Detroit make it past round one? Maybe. Oh my word. We lost the first two games and I was not hopeful whatsoever, but a big four game win streak from Detroit to come back and we end up making it to the conference finals against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Go on? No! I thought we made it. The Arizona Coyotes win the Stanley Cup and they were also pretty high up in the standings if I remember right. Bertuzzi, point a game in the playoffs, certified mad lad. Yeah, Arizona finished fifth in the league. That's solid. What did their team look like? They had Vrana, Eriksson, Ek, and Rantanen, Kapanen, Nuge, and Lucius. Don't know who that is. 
This roster is weird. I think I got a switch. Not sure if I even pointed this out, but we finished ninth in the league. So it was a pretty solid year. Would have been nicer if we got 100 points, but 98 is acceptable, I suppose. Tom Wilson was also pointing a game in the playoffs with 18. Patrice led the league in playoff points with 32. Marner got 29. And then a pretty big fall off to the next 23 for Rantanen. Just go through the awards real quick here as we do. Pass it with the Art Ross. Hart goes to Kyle Connor. Spurgeon with the Norris. Pass it gets the Lady Bing. Zegris with the Calder. Bennington gets the Conn Smythe. Leonard gets the Vesna and the Jennings. Braun gets the Masterton. McCabe with the Jack Adams. Crosby with the Selkie. Kyle Connor with the Ted Lindsay. And Austin Matthews with the Rocky Richard. Try to do that all in one breath. Not sure if I pulled it off or not. And here's the sweepless playoff. No, come on. The Islanders and the Blue Jackets had a sweep in the upper right-hand corner there. But at least the conference finals and the Stanley Cup finals had at least six games. And the Stanley Cup finals had seven, which is nice. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I'll see you soon.